Welcome to the Hemp Del Soul Podcast. All health, no high. Here's your host, Mary Lisa Lawless. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Hemp Del Soul Podcast. I am your co-host, Jeremy Wolf, joined by none none other than your host, Mary Lisa Lawless. Mary Lisa, good to see you. Yes, same here. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Feels like it's been forever, even though it's only been a month. Yep, yep, indeed. So I wanted to try something a little bit different today. Wanted to rattle off some FAQs, some frequently asked questions surrounding one of the businesses that you do, which is CBDs. I know a lot of people out there have strong feelings about cannabis and CBDs and hemp and marijuana. Mm -hmm. Um, But as it becomes more mainstream, I think it's important to clear up some of these misconceptions and myths. So first off, like what are the, some of the potential side effects of using CBD? Uh, And I, I have to preface it with anecdotally because of legal things. However, my experience has been the worst side effect that anybody has ever had was that they were sleepy, which for many people is not a bad thing. That's not a bad bad side effect in most cases. (laughs) Um, There is maybe two people that I have worked with over the past five or six years that I've been, you know, doing the CBD that they had some stomach upset. That's that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so pretty safe. What are, I guess, is it safe to use on a daily basis? I'm guessing it is because you haven't had issues, but is this something that's recommended that you could take every day without issue? Yeah, in the CBD community, because everything is hemp based, it's not a drug. Um, you're not going to get high. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to have any of those euphoric experiences. It is because it's not a drug. It's absolutely recommended that you take it on a daily basis to get the best benefit. So, so is it more, I guess, classified as a supplement than a drug? Would that be a good classification it, to it, use? It was, it's a better classification to put it as a supplement, okay. but it's not it's not really classified as anything yet. So I'm not really sure about any of it, um, according to the FDA. CBD interact with other medications. So like for for instance, somebody's on, maybe they're on an antidepressant. And again, I know you're not a doctor and and this is just us speaking, but from your experience, if somebody is on some kind of other medication, is there any negative side effects or interactions through CBD use? No, actually, they've discovered that CBD actually increases serotonin. Okay. It's one of the studies that have come out. And that's what most of the antidepressants are. They're for increasing serotonin. So I actually have had many of my own patients get off their antidepressant when they got stable with the amount of CBD that they were taking. So I have seen not a negative interaction, but a positive replacement so that they've actually been able to replace their antidepressant medication. I've seen people get off of their pain medication specifically because they were using CBD and the CBD appeared to be taking care of their inflammation. And sometimes pain is increased because of anxiety. So once the CBD took care of the anxiety and the pain, they didn't need the pain medication anymore. That's fantastic. As somebody that has taken antidepressants and, and anxiety and pain medicine throughout my life. I know how, how difficult that could be on the mind and how it could totally change the, the, the way your mind is structured. So if there's an alternative to that, and like, I think we've talked about before, like it doesn't hurt to try it, right. To just implement it into your life and see what it does for you. Because there is, it, it is again, through all accounts, pretty damn safe. Yeah. And through, throughout cannabis as the parent of marijuana and hemp, Nobody's ever died from an overdose. Nobody's yep. ever had any life-threatening illnesses as a result of taking hemp. Mm. So, so what does the FDA say about all of this? Like, where are they at with this? I know this is still on uh, so much red tape, but like, what are what is the FDA's current positions and guidelines regarding the safety and efficacy of CBD? Well, realistically, they have been studying this since the nineteen seventies. <laughs> It it is kind of crazy. So they have more and more studies, more and more studies, and they have approved medically a CBD product 
Epitalox for treating seizures. Okay. But it's only that one product. And then there's two others, I believe, that they've also approved. But they are prescription only. And they are CBD. And so um, the Epitalox is CBD. And the other two are actually synthetic THC-based um, medications for pain. But that's all the FDA has approved. So the FDA hasn't said this is a supplement, nor are they saying it's a drug. They're saying we need to do more research. So they approved synthetic THC for pain? Because I've heard I've heard all sorts yeah. of horror stories about the synthetic THCs that they sell. Yeah, no, no, no. And this is a prescription. Okay. Like I said, I can't remember the names of it. It's like, mm, it used to be Marinol was the one, but that's not, I don't know that that's still around, but Marinol was synthetic THC that they used to treat pain and they were giving it only to cancer patients. Got it. So, okay. and that was for years. So the FDA just, they're, they, the, I read a report that came out last month from the FDA. Um, and what they said the holdup is, is being able to get it in front of Congress. Oh. And that if Congress put some pressure on the FDA to continue their research, it would move forward. But so what you're saying, so what you're saying is that it'll get done in the next uh, the next three decades. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know, so what what about age restrictions? Are are there any recommended ages, uh, or is there a recommended age for use of CBD products? And are there any restrictions specifically on like children's and children and teenagers? There, it, there's no true legal age 18 on some 21 on some it just depends but the it, realistically it's 18 and over sure i do know children that take it i do do they need to get people. do they need to get authorization from from a, their doctor to do that or it's just up to the parent well, most of the point? time they do they do but the children that i know take it i do know doctors that give it to children um that are really high anxiety and or on the autism spectrum. Yeah. So I, I do know that there are many children that are taking CBD. And again, with that disclaimer of it's not, you know, there's nowhere that it's recommended for children. Sure. Yet I know many that are taking it, many with, that are on no, the autism no spectrum issue. and yeah. or have attention deficit issues. They're taking that. Parents are, are giving that to their children instead of medication that the doctors will prescribe. So I do know neurologists, child neurologists and um, child psychiatrists that will recommend CBD. And some actually sell CBD out of their offices. And it makes a huge difference with these children. Again, anecdotally, I've even I've had parents that have reached out to me that have said, wow, what a difference this has made for my kid, for his focus in school. What a difference this has made for my kid to be able to sleep at night. What a difference this is. Because a lot of parents are giving their kids melatonin, which is not a good idea, <laughs> you know, because they want to knock their kid out at night. Yeah. yeah. You know, but the I, other I just, option is clonidine, which is a medication, oh, which is antihypertensive. And that's what they give kids to put them to sleep because it lowers their blood pressure enough that they fall asleep. But Again, I don't know many parents that are that well informed that will just do that without doing research. Yeah, sure. So some of the things they put kids on for different disorders is crazy, like giving Adderall to a child for ADD or ADHD. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, let's just give them speed to, to fix the issue. It sounds what great. Is, yeah. Well, the <laughs> speed, what it does is actually helps the brain to coalesce and pull into focus. Yeah. It's not that it's doing the reverse or anything like that. It does what amphetamines do. <laughs> Pulls you into focus. So that's why it's always been recommended. But yeah, there's side effects. Kids lose weight. Kids don't sleep. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there's other issues. And the parents that I've spoken to don't have any of those issues with their kids that are taking CBD. They see it as a godsend. Indeed. So I know one of the things that you pride yourself on at Hemp Del Sol is where you sort, where and how you source your products. 
right? Absolutely. Very important to make sure you're getting the best product available. So how could the general consumer that is interested in learning more and, and ultimately trying CBD, how could they ensure that they're purchasing and using the highest quality and the, and the safest uh, C CBD products? So if they're getting it off a website, don't buy it on Amazon, please. If they're buying it off a website, make sure they're checking the certificates of analysis called COAs. It should be on every single website that sells CBD. And what that is, is third-party lab testing that says that what's in this bottle, in this jar, in this lotion, in this product is what it says it is. That there is no difference. You know, and that it's that that that's what it is, you know, that it is what it is. Got it. Lastly, what is what is some of some of the ongoing research or what ongoing research is the FDA currently conducting on CBD? Um, they're still they're still saying that they have. So 51 percent appears to be for pain management. Uh, 9% is actually for psychiatry. And this is just a report that came out in May. 9% um, of the research is about psychiatry and helping with mental health issues. And then just various other bits and pieces. But those were the two that stood out to me in that report. Got it. So, yes. And that's uh, recent. That's recent research. So it was, it had a little pie chart on the FDA website about what they're doing. Okay. Very cool. So, that wraps it up. If you guys like this format with these frequently asked questions, if you think this was useful, please drop a comment below and let us know if there's any other topics you'd like us to address. Mary Lisa, always a pleasure. Absolutely. I'm glad we're doing this. And yes, I love to answer questions. So please feel free to reach out to me. Um, phone number's right there. It's my cell phone. Just text me. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And everyone, thanks for tuning in, and we will look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Hemp Dale Soul Podcast. Everyone take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Hemp Dale Soul Podcast. Explore our wide range of organic products at hempdelsoul.com. That's H-E-M-P-D-E-L-S-O-U-L.com. Or contact 954 854 1039